So this video is going to cover cyclic hemiacetals that are both flat, the way we've kind of been seeing them, and chair conformation, because these are hexagons, but remember they're not flat planar things, they actually exist in chairs. So, um, just to remind ourselves, if we consider this carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 over here, it is the carbon, is the oxygen on carbon 5 that's going to end up attacking here. So we get a six-membered ring and this oxygen becomes one of the members of that ring. And there it is right there. So carbon 5 is right here and it has a CH2OH attached to it. And we almost always draw that in the upward position here like that. If OHs are on the right hand side, so this is carbon 1 where it was attacked and that carbonyl becomes an OH and it can go in one of two ways above or below. So let's just say it goes below the below the line here. Okay, so um, if the OH is on the right hand side here, then we always write it below the ring. So on the fourth carbon, it's also below. And on the third carbon, it's above. Okay, and um, that is pretty much it. We're not going to draw on the H's. I'll draw on one H, which is um, right here, just to show. And when we have CH2OH and the OH on this anomeric carbon, and they're on opposite sides, we say that this is the alpha anomer. So this would be the alpha glucose. Okay, and the way I remember that is like this, opposite. Except I changed the O in opposite to an alpha. Clever, right? Okay, um, same thing can happen. However, remember this is flat and planar, so it can come from the other side. So our CH2OH is right here, and our OH is up here. Everything else stays in the same place. And this would be our beta glucose. And when both of these are above the plane, that's how I remember it. So the way I remember that is like that, above. Okay. So um, how do we do? How do we represent these things as chairs? Okay. Well, um, that we have to go back to thinking about in terms of just general chairs. Things can be in axial or equatorial positions. Okay. So here is an axial position. Here is an equatorial position. Here. Here is an axial position, here is an equatorial position. And remember, they change as we go around the ring. So carbon, this is the oxygen here, so the carbon that is below, so if I'm going to draw the um, CH2OH, it's right here. Okay? So um, in order for CH2OH and the OH to be on opposite sides of the ring, this is going to end up being in its axial position. This one is also below the ring, so it's going to be in its equatorial position. And this one over here is going to end up being above the ring, so it's also going to be in its equatorial position. And then this one over here is going to end up being below the ring, so it's also in its equatorial position. And that's it. So we've got our H's over here, and that's how the molecule ends up looking as a chair. Everything stays in the same place for this one, CH2OH. So OH here, OH equatorial here, OH equatorial here. And then here, because these things are on the same side of the ring, we have OH in the equatorial position and H in the axial. So remember, when these two are on adjacent carbons, if it's axial on one, axial on the other, those are trans. And if they are equatorial on one, equatorial on the other, also trans. Okay? And if they are one carbon apart, okay, so there's a carbon separating them, these two axials are on the same side, so they'd be cis, and these two equatorials are on the same side, so they'd also be cis. All right, so just sort of keep that in mind as you're moving from cyclic hemiacetals to chair conformations. And most of the time we represent them like this just because it's a little easier to visualize, but we have to remember that these are 3D structures. All right, good luck.